God is good. All, All the, the time. time. All the time. God is good. Welcome to worship on this Sunday morning. We're in the fifth Sunday of Easter. I'd like to welcome you to worship in our virtual space. Um, just a couple of announcements before we begin. You probably received from the church council a letter on just our reopening. Uh, we will be waiting until the governor's announcement of phase two, and the council will make some decisions in terms of which date we'll have our first on-site worship service. In that letter as well are some expectations of how life will be different for us for a while as we worship some of the, uh, some of the procedures and practices that we'll have just to keep people safe. Another announcement, next Sunday, uh, the 17th of May, We'll be recognizing our seniors, the graduates, who will be graduating on that following weekend, the 24th. We will be inviting you, the congregation, in to a live Zoom blessing. Uh, we'll be sending out a link uh, next week, so please watch for that, and you can tune in and join in as we as a congregation uh, wrap those seniors with those prayer shawls and our love and send them out into the world with a blessing. So do watch for that. It'll be next Sunday, 11.15, for that live Zoom blessing for our seniors. Again, welcome to worship. We gather this morning in the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We gather in the name of the living Christ to worship God. Surely God is in this place and calls us to worship in spirit and in truth. God's love is for you and for all people everywhere. That we may share God's love and life. May we be renewed in the refreshing spirit of the living Christ. The living Christ is with us. Praise the Lord. be with you and also with you let us pray almighty God your son Jesus Christ is the way the truth and the life give us grace to love one another to follow in the way of his commandments and to share his risen life with all the world for he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God now and forever. Amen. Well, normally I'd be inviting the children to come down to the chancel and gather with me around the altar, but I invite you to uh, gather your children uh, around the computer screen as Nikki Groshans, our Director of Youth and Family Ministries, will be sharing a children's chat this morning. Welcome. So I have a children's chat for you today. And a question, um, have you ever been in the car, maybe riding with your parents or family, and seen anyone use like a phone, or maybe they have a screen in their car that gives them directions that has a map on it? Or sometimes, I don't think you've probably ever seen a paper map. Maybe, maybe, but we don't really use those so much anymore. Now we have um, phones and computers in our cars, kind of built right in maps that guide us and give us directions and help us so we don't get lost. 
So I will use those when I'm not sure where I'm going because I will get lost. I'm not so great. I don't remember street names very well. I'll get turned around and lost. So I'll use my phone and I'll just put in where I need to go. And then it tells me, turn here, turn there. You've arrived at your destination. It's pretty simple. So I will use that to help me when I worried about getting lost or sometimes I can ask, you can ask for directions. So maybe you just still can't find it. I saw this the other day when I was walking my dog, there was a lady that just kept driving. I kept seeing her thinking she must be lost. And pretty soon she stopped and she rolled down her window and she asked this man out in his front yard where a street was at. And I could see him. He was kind of pointing. She had just missed it. So he gave her directions and we can do that too. When we were feeling lost, we can ask, or we can ask people to help us with directions too. So in today's Bible story, Jesus is telling his disciples that there is room for everyone in God's house and that that's where he's going to be returning to live. He's going to be going back to live with God. And he says that we should know the way that they should, the disciples should know the way because they've been spending time with Jesus. They've been hanging out with him, right? They see how he lives and the things that he does and how wonderful he is. So he tells them that they should know the way, but I wonder if they were thinking, hmm, I don't know, I could probably use a map. That sounds hard. Well, then Jesus tells them that he is the way. So he is the way. So he's kind of like our map in life, right? He shows us the right way. We can know how to treat others and how to do the right thing by thinking about how Jesus lived and what he did. He's like our map that can help us make the right decisions in life. And he also tells us that if we're feeling lost or confused, we can ask other people to help guide us. So we can stop, we can ask people that we know and trust, people that love us. And you guys have people right there in your homes, your family that love you. And if you're feeling lost and you need some help finding your way to Jesus, you can always ask them questions and talk to them. And just like your church family who's watching from their own, own homes right now, when we all can be back together again, we can always talk to each other and you guys have any questions and feel a little lost, you can always ask your family. So we're going to say a prayer real quick and then I'm going to say goodbye for now. All right. Dear Jesus, thank you for showing us the way. Thank you for showing us how to love one another and treat one another. Be with us each day and guide us. Amen. All right. Bye, guys. Gospel this morning is uh, by Amanda King, one of the youth in our congregation, also one of our graduating seniors. Um, she is reading today's gospel from the front of her father and mother's house. So please prepare yourself for the gospel according to John. According to John, the 14th chapter, starting with verse 1. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him.
Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Verily truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Good morning on this Mother's Day. Um, it's interesting we get this Gospel reading that talks about my father's house on Mother's Day. We really wind up focusing our attention on the love of a parent that love that uh, God offers for us that winds up being willing to give and to sacrifice and even lay down his life uh, for those that he loves, just like any parent would. Friends, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Jesus' disciples were anxious and scared and stressed lost. You probably know what that feels like. Just a few sentences before our gospel lesson for this morning, Jesus said to his disciples, I will be with you for only a little longer. And the disciples couldn't imagine life on earth without Jesus. They were afraid for their future. They had left everything to follow him. They walked away from careers and homes, everything they owned in order to be with this guy, to learn from this guy, to follow this guy. And now he tells them that he's going away. What are they going to do? Who will they follow? Who will show them to the abundant life that they had been experiencing ever since they started hanging out with Jesus? So Jesus does what Jesus always does when people are afraid or anxious. He gently spends time telling them, don't worry. Everything is going to be all right. You're not going to see me with your eyes much longer, but I will be with you. And you're going to be doing great things. And I will still be leading you. You will still be following me. I will not leave you alone. I won't let you get lost. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. These words aren't just for those disciples of long ago, but for us today. For you. Jesus goes on to talk about his father's house. His father's house. It's an odd thing for him to say. The only other time that Jesus uses this expression is when he's talking about the temple in John chapter 2. And the point about the temple is that the temple is the place where heaven and earth meet. It was the place where you go to be with God. But Jesus was not referring to an earthly temple like he was back in John chapter 2. In my father's house, 
There are many rooms. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me so that where I am, you also may be. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. Hold on, wait a second. Thomas was one who was never to stay silent when things aren't making sense, and so he speaks up. Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? So Jesus says something very profound. He says, I am the way. What in the world did Jesus mean by that? As Nikki in our children's chat talked about, people get lost as they're driving around. Suppose we're in a strange town and we stop and ask someone for directions. That person might say something like, take the first right and then the second left, go past the park and the Burger King, take the third right and the road that you want will be the fourth one on your left. If you're anything like me, you'll be lost before you get halfway there. But imagine if the person you ask says instead, follow me. I'll take you there. This is what Jesus does for us. And by following Jesus, we will be in the Father's house. And I don't mean after we die. I mean right here. Right now, Jesus is that embodiment of the Father's house. Soon after our passage this morning, Jesus says that he, after he is crucified, raised from the dead, ascends to heaven. In other words, after he goes away, Jesus will not leave those who believe in him orphaned or alone. What in the world? He just said he's going away. Now he is saying that he, when he does go away, he won't leave the disciples alone. Instead, he says, I will come to you. If anyone loves me, my father will love them and will come to him or her and make our home with them. In my father's house, there are many rooms. And if it were not so, I would have told you. I am going to prepare a place for you. Could it be at least while we're still living here on earth, that the many rooms in the Father's house are you and me and everyone else who believes. Later in 1 Corinthians 3, verse 16, Paul proclaims, don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit lives in you. And later he winds up writing, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? That is great news for us. In these days when 
we may somehow feel distant from God because we cannot be in this space. We can't be in this church praying together, visiting with one another, sitting in our usual seat because you feel like this place somehow conveys the presence of God. So in this, Jesus offers some great news. Could it be that those who believe are the place where heaven and earth meet? And that means you, and you, and you, and even me. Collectively, we are the very body of Christ. We are the many rooms in the Father's house, I like that. I love to think that I, Darren Paulson, with all my faults and failings, not only have a place in the Father's house, but I am part of the Father's house as I belong to Jesus. What do you think of that? And trusting in God, I I need not let my heart be troubled. Now, that doesn't mean that those who trust in Christ don't get sad. Jesus' heart was often troubled when he saw Mary weeping at Lazarus' tomb. As a matter of fact, we were told that Jesus himself wept. Jesus was sad that when he realized that his time to be arrested had come and to be crucified. He was sad when he declared that one of his disciples would betray him. But these all point to the grief in the face of the power of evil and death and the brokenness of humankind, of those that he loves, that is you and me, everyone that's ever lived. Can we get a little grasp of how much God loves us? And then we start showing that same kind of love that Jesus did while he was on this earth. Because let's face it, he is actually still here. He lives and dwells in the rooms of those who believe and call us to follow his example. He fed the hungry, and he involved his followers in the distribution of that food. He loved the strangers. He welcomed the sinners. He treated the nobodies with dignity and respect. And when he was asked what it means to fulfill the greatest commandment to love God and neighbor, Jesus lifted up as as an example a Samaritan. Someone reviled of a different race, different country. Jesus was present in the homes of the lonely. That's good news for us today. Jesus was God. But the most humble person in the room healing the sick, raising the dead, and he's still doing these things today. Because he's doing it through you. He dwells in you. There's no greater privilege 
There's no other thing that is real life. No one comes to the Father but by him. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our song this morning is You Are the Way. join together proclaiming our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the the third third day he rose again, he ascended ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places by praying for the church, the world, and all those who are in need. Everybody needs a quiet place to pray. Everybody needs a quiet place to Build us up, gracious God, as living stones united into your spiritual house. Continually strengthen your church as it is sent forth to proclaim your love. We pray especially for congregations in these days as they seek wisdom and guidance before they resume worship. Be with new congregations and those in redevelopment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Nurturing God on this Mother's Day. We pray for those who tend and teach young children, for safe pregnancies of expectant parents, for families who struggle with infertility and miscarriage, We give thanks for all who have shown mothering care. And we remember all for whom this day is difficult. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Humble us, creator God. As part of your creation, fill us with respect and awe for the world you have made. Align our ways to your love, O God. We pray for countries, leaders, and other organizations as they prepare places for those seeking refuge in 
and safety and healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing and rest, help those whose hearts are heavy and weighed down by many troubles. Comfort their suffering, ease their distress, and carry their burdens. We pray especially for Fran, Duncan, Clarice, Matt, and Bob. This week we pray also for atonement members Leslie, Richard and Helen, Eddie and Cheryl, Dave and Anne, Cynthia. We lift up their prayers of need and thanksgiving, which are known to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please greet those around you in real time and virtual time as well. We have our time of offering now. Thank you very much to those who have been continuing to send in their contributions by mail or those who are signed up electronically with their giving, regular giving. But we also appreciate those who have been utilizing this Give Plus app. We have instructions on the screen if you wish to give uh, through that, that mobile app at this time. Please follow the instructions. We'll send you with this benediction. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust, trust in God, God trust, trust in, in Jesus. Jesus. Christ has gone to prepare a place for us. Christ, Christ will, will lead, lead us to be with, with him. him. We know the, the way to the place where Jesus is. Jesus, Jesus is, is the, the way, way, the, the truth, truth, and, and the, the life. life. Come. Let us depart together on the journey of faith. Come, Come let, let us, us follow Jesus, Jesus who, who is the way. way. Amen. Amen. the church, the living, breathing presence of God in this world, you are sent in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.